Have you seen the new Polestar 3? Well, here it is, the newly announced Polestar 3 EV, and it's a stunner. I'm Sarlo Grant, and thanks for taking the time to come to my channel. Now, let's take a couple of minutes to watch this short edited video from Engadget. Late last year, Polestar announced its third or its fourth new car, depending on how you're counting. And while we weren't able to go to the launch in Europe, today Polestar brought the Polestar 3 here to New York for its North American debut. And as soon as I heard that, I knew we had to come check it out because this thing might be the best looking new EV of 2023. Recap of Polestar's history. Now Polestar's first car was the Polestar 1, which was a plug-in EV. It was a more of a two-seater hybrid, so not really all that practical. And then after that, they came out with the Polestar 2, which was kind of a blend between a crossover and a, a tall sedan, but it was a full battery electric vehicle. But now we have the Polestar 3. And the Polestar 3 shares a platform with Volvo's EX90, so similar base. Now this car looks amazing, and it's got a really interesting approach to modern design. There's almost a little bit of like typography focus with the car because as you can see, we have the Polestar name, the Polestar 3 right here, and it's labeled with the battery. But this kind of typography and transparency is something you can see throughout the car. So another thing I wanna talk about is the Polestar 3's headlights. Now, as you can see here, we have an updated interpretation of Polestar's Thor's hammer design, and it's a two bladed design. So you have the top section right here, and obviously the bottom section down here. So as you can see here, we have a very flush design for the door handles. Once again, that's kind of to help with aerodynamics. It's pretty easy to use. You stick your hand in and lift up. Right here, kind of a subtle design feature is that Polestar is using frameless side view mirrors on the Polestar 3, which once again helps with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. And then moving around to the side, we have a very traditional placement for the charging port, as you can see here. On the Polestar 3, we're looking at 250 kilowatt DC charging. And so now we're here in the back and you can see there's a huge light bar that runs across the back of the car. You also have really aggressive styling in back with these haunches. And if you look at it, the roof isn't quite as high as you might expect for a standard SUV. And that's because even though it shares a platform with the Volvo EX90, the Polestar 3 is only gonna be available with two rows of seats. And on top of that, they extended the wheelbase so it's a little bit longer to make the cabin inside. Now that does come with a little bit of trade-off in terms of storage. So the trunk isn't as huge as you might expect compared to something like the BMW iX, but that's because they really wanted to make it feel luxurious and roomy inside, especially for those second row passengers. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm not a small guy. Uh, I'm about six foot tall and I have plenty of leg room. Like, just look at this, how much space I have. And there's a big, fixed sunroof in here and I you know it's really spacious I'm not worried about headroom at all I'm not worried about legroom but we have a, a leather interior which is kind of the upgraded trim but there's also going to be a, a vegan interior that's made out of what Pulsar calls a microtech material and it's a plant-based vinyl because instead of being derived from uh, petroleum or oil-based sources they're using a pine oil material to make that vegan vinyl. Another interesting thing is that Polestar is also using a composite flax fiber material in places like the seats and on the interior of the door. The car looks incredible, but it's not just that. It's got a really interesting and sophisticated tech package too. And if you like the full video from Engadget, I've included a link down below. Now, as much as I'm a fan of Tesla vehicles, I must say that seeing more and more of them every day is getting a bit numbing. I mean, the tech is not only world class in their vehicles, but they're seriously the world's benchmark as to how to build a car. The only problem with this is that it wouldn't hurt to add some new visual updates from time to time to keep them fresh. Real visual updates that you wouldn't need the company or a YouTuber to explain to you what to look for. For example, a couple of years ago, I leased an Acura TL. I'm a fan of their designs. When the 2015 model year was introduced, I couldn't stand it. The design was horrible because it was too generic. Acura did a mid-cycle refresh three years later on the vehicle, and it was easy to tell that the car was upgraded. Cosmetics nonetheless, but it did it for me. The front and rear lights designed were significantly restyled and upgraded. I was like, wow, this car looks amazing. At some point in time, Tesla is going to have to adopt this tried and true cheap strategy into his vehicle lineup in order to not lose potential buyers to what I call the sameness visual fatigue of Tesla vehicles that are everywhere these days. Also, 
What doesn't help is the Model 3 is so ubiquitous on roads these days, you're bound to spot one that is run down, really dusty, banged up, and abused. It lessens the appeal of the brand because the Model 3 has reached the critical threshold that of becoming the Toyota Camry EV. Owners don't have pride when driving it, they just want an affordable Tesla. Certainly, when this happens, the Model 3 is becoming a utility device. The owners of this large group are likely not even washing their vehicles, not even once a month. Dents everywhere. Being the first to buy into a new car design usually means you are a fan of that vehicle. You're willing to pay a bit more because it's going to be seen as unique and honestly, typically the car is going to be pampered for a while. The enthusiast nature of protecting your baby is at play because it's something that will give you that special feeling. I'm now leasing the 2023 Acura Integra. I reserved this car four or five months before it was released. I wanted it because of nostalgic reasons. My first car was a 1997 Acura Integra. Anyhow, after taking possession of the vehicle, it was maybe six months before I saw another 2023. Needless to say, I felt fairly unique. Okay, I know I'm rambling, so let's get to the point. Millions of people buy cars simply because the way they look. Design and style are inherently intertwined to the emotional side of our monkey brains. Visuals can overwhelm the senses and sidestep logic. Who cares how fast it is? Who cares about the range? Some people think all EVs are gonna meet a certain standard and threshold anyhow. Lots of people on the road simply buy or lease cars because it's what they feel is sexy to them. For one, Polestar Motors has some polarizing cars, to me at least. A while ago, after seeing the Polestar 2 and test driving it, I couldn't get past the looks of it. I think it's hideous. Then the other day on the highway, I spotted the Polestar 1. It's their two-door coupe design. I was floored. It's truly beautiful, and if I had the money, it'd be in my garage right now. Like I said, the specs I'm sure are adequate. I just like it because it's fresh, bold, and a new design that you don't see every day. Which brings us to the Polestar 3 EV. I, I believe it'll be categorized as some type of SUV. In the photos and videos that you're watching now, you can't deny that this thing looks terrific. Even on the company's website, they're calling it street art. Surely people will want one because of that. I'm only speculating, but I don't think Polestar 2s are selling extraordinarily well. Might have something to do with the design. Have a good one. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It seems to be helping out the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks.